we're just you're going to um, ask questions, right? Like you're going to sort of, you're going to interview me pretty much. I was, I was kind of hoping that we could just like, just sit with you and just watch you for like 10 to 15 minutes. And not with you. <laughs> <laughs> Do my head. <laughs> when I worked on that dog's gut, it's cancer got better. When I worked on that cat's gut, it's leukemia got better. When I worked on that cat's gut, it's skin got better. When I worked on that dog's gut, it's ear infections got better. Bonjour, you beautiful thing. How the heck are you? Very excited about this interview that I did with Julianne Lee, the owner and the brains, the power, the female power behind the adored beast apothecary. Amazing person, amazing company with amazing products. They have a ton of free information as well, and they have live Q and A's. Unreal. There'll be links below and at the end, and also at the end, you will have a chance to enter for a free, a, some free products from the Adored Beast. Which, who doesn't like free? Come on. So in this interview, you're going to get to learn the history about Julie and her adventure. Just awesome story get right into it enjoy the interview there she is thanks julie julie this is evan evan this is julie hi how are you hey, darling how are you uh doggy style thing is it's just about helping people understand that it's not just training it's not just behavior it's not just modification that that while People want their dogs to stop barking more and stop jumping on them and come when called. That that's great and that's important so that your dog can therefore have more freedom and, and live a better life. But it starts with health and that it starts with understanding your dog and their needs and what they need more. So in order to do that, um, sometimes we need products and most of the time we need outside help because we can't be experts about everything. So that's where, for me, people like you come in. Who am I? And I said, I have no idea because it seems like I evolve and change daily. Very early on, I, I knew from a horse accident that I couldn't have children. And I, I think what happened at that point, you know, I was fairly young. Then that whole maternal thing, that whole, that everything just translated into animals. And it came naturally because of my mom and having living in a rescue. But um, I think, I think with that, you know, like I love the microbiome and I love the gut and it's, it's, a, it's a really, really, it's a really massive interest for me. And I feel like the way I got to where I am is why I, is who I am and why I am because of diversity. The focus has always been on how can I make the world a better place for animals and nature. Are you from here? Mm -mm. No, Where are you from? I'm, from, I'm originally from Ontario. Okay. And then I moved to BC to go to UBC to do my okay. human homeopathic medicine course. And then I um, had full intentions of moving back to Toronto, but then I went to England and did the three-year British homeopathic veterinary surgeons course. And then I went to, I went with that group. The, the, that group is called the British Physicians Teaching Group. So there are veterinarians and medical doctors that, that do um, postgraduate education, like with homeopathy. And um, so then I traveled with them for a few years. Like I went to India and Greece. Oh, wow. And then I did lots of practicums in England, like all over Eng England and different clinics. When I opened Adored Beast, it was the first licensed holistic vet clinic in, in Canada. And um, probably the first licensed holistic clinic, possibly from that, from the way it was licensed in, in North America, because most holistic clinics around the world were regular clinics. And then they started to incorporate holistic medicine within a conventional practice. Whereas with me, it was a holistic clinic right from the get-go. 
and then two years later opened up seven almost seven thousand square foot full practice veterinary hospital with full surgery um ultrasound scopes physiotherapy chiropractics acupuncture homeopathy it was it was amazing and then it just went on from there so i guess when you ask me who i am i'm just a really determined person i think that my determination comes from the love I have for nature and animals. Um, I started seeing patients and because I was, you know, I was a newbie, I felt fairly newbie um, in homeopathy. You know, you were saying how it's complicated, right? Like homeopathy is a complicated modality. It's incredible, but it's complicated. So I would get these cases in and the first five years of practice, I got really tough cases. I got, if you can't help this dog's aggression, we have, we have to put it to sleep. If you can't help this dog's cancer, we're putting it to sleep. If you can't help this cat's, you know, leukemia, we're putting it to sleep. If you can't help this, like all the like end stage, we spent $20,000, you're our last hope, blah, blah, blah. Like that's what I got. Like, first thing I always did was change their diet. And then I would, I would take their case and do all this. And then I would change their diet immediately, like before they left, They'd have a, a diet change. And then I would go and stay up until five o'clock in the morning and researching remedies and trying to find a constitutional constitutional remedy and like work on the case, work on the case, work on the case. And then I'd be like, okay, give them a call, tell them I have the remedy, remedy, ask them to come back in so I can see them. They'd come back in and the animal would already be significant, significantly better. 90% of them would be on dry food. I did the formula for the very first raw commercial food in Canada. Uh, they were going usually off of dry, onto cooked, then onto raw. So I would transition them into, into raw. That, that would be normally the case, dogs and cats. So, you know, you know people would be like, oh, you know, he's, I noticed he was a little less snappy. I noticed that he was a little less... You know, his stomach isn't as bad. I noticed the hot spots are getting a little bit better. You would, you would significantly see within one week to two weeks max, um, you know, sometimes sooner, them change, right? Like them, them change. But then, you know, and then I would give them the remedies and then they would get significantly better even with that. And then I started, you know, really, really playing with remedies and looking at protocols and doing different things. And then I started seeing ultimately they would get a digestive upset at some point, right? We would be either adding supplements or we would be doing something and they would get diarrhea, whether it was cancer, whether it was aggression, whether it was, it, it wouldn't matter. Usually with the diet change or, or something, they would get a little bit of like soft stool or runny poops or, or whatever. And I would start putting them on my pro probiotic protocol then, right? Like I would start focusing on the gut. Okay, when I worked on that dog's gut, its cancer got better. When I worked on that cat's gut, its leukemia got better. When I worked on that cat's gut, its skin got better. When I worked on that dog's gut, its ear infections got better. When I, like, like the, the remedies were holding them and keeping them really doing well in the diet, but you started working on the gut and you would have to be completely disconnected from seeing anything in front of you, it started becoming super clear to me how important gut health was. What's like one product that you're like, every, this, this could help every dog. Phytos flora. So, so why that versus gut soothe? Because Gut Soothe is incredible. Like a Gut Soothe is like a Band-Aid and a diarrhea Band-Aid in a bottle. It's, it, it, it has so much integrity for like, you know, it helps bladders, it helps nasal passages, it, ha it helps everything. It's an incredible, incredible product. Why, why this is different is it comes from dog feces, right? It's fermented and the, 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 the strains have been isolated so that it's actual it's actual a fermentation probiotic made from the bacteria in a dog's gut. It doesn't exist anywhere else. It's the only one of its kind. 
And then they've taken it one step farther and they've done all this other research and it, it, I'll have to send it to you. It will blow you away what these strains do. They, they, they are able to suppress and maintain and, and stop the proliferation of E. coli, salmonella, uh, clostridium, all the things that bats are scared of with raw food. It's like, okay, well, that makes complete sense to me because they're supposed to be making, they're supposed to be eating raw food. So their guts haven't been equipped because we're removing that natural old species DNA bacteria from their gut, right? So that makes total sense. Now we know this, the same product or the same, these same species of probiotics, the same bacteria um, actually uh, have been proven and we can make cl health claims saying that it, it, um, it's an immune modulator. It actually m modulates the immune system. So when you give your dog prednisone or venectal P, you're trying to suppress the immune system because it's gone too high. But the problem with that is it brings it down and it, it suppresses, it, it destroys the immune system, right? So you're up and down like this. This bacteria is actually an immune modulator. So if, if the immune system is going too high into autoimmune disease or cancers or whatever, it helps to bring it down into balance. If it go, it's too low and it's looking at bacteria and viruses, it helps to bring it back up. So it's an actual immune modulator. So it's, it's incredible. And, and we put fulvic and humic acid in it. And fulvic and humic acid um, has now has health claims to show that it heals the permeability of the gut, which is giving them like 91 different organic minerals that we don't even have in the world anymore because it's, it's, from, a, it's from the soil from fulvic and humic acid comes from the ice age. So if you've got leaky gut, if they've got leaky gut, if they've got gut trauma, which almost every single walking being in this world has, um, it helps to heal that permeability. And then the other thing that it does is it's got larch in it, which is our prebiotic. And it has been shown, it, it's got tons of studies showing that it um, helps to derail um, the metastases of cancer. Plus it's made from, to me, it's the only prebiotic that's suitable for dogs. So all the fructose prebiotics and stuff are great for people. I don't think that they are good for dogs. So when I was really looking at a prebiotic, I'm like, well, what, how would dogs get prebiotics in the wild? So they get them from the gut of their prey. And what are the, what are the, what's the prey? I looked at beavers, elk, deer, squirrels, rats, mice, birds. And the one thing they all had in common is they ate tree bark. And larch is, tree, is made from tree bark. So it's, to me, makes the most sense when it comes to what a, a proper prebiotic is. So, and then it's got my 14 strains. So that then you become, holy, mo holy crap, I was going to say, for real. Because it's got 14, you need diversity. The gut needs di diversity. If you're using one or two strains of a probiotic, you can be causing more harm than good. Unreal. I love it. Well, you, I, I feel like your middle name should be Thorough. Um, <laughs> or anal. <laughs> would be more appropriate for Fidos, Florida. Discussion. <laughs> so that's it. What did you think? Share this if you dare. Share if you dare. And in order to enter to win, leave a comment below with, let's see, what can, we, what can we get you to do? A picture of your dog to win Fido's Flora, the thing that Julie recommends, theadoredbeast.com if you're in the U.S. or international, .ca if you're in Canada. Much your loved. Bye, meow.